Good morning. It's Thursday morning here on Plus TV Africa, and we are just about to begin the Off the Press, which is the newspaper review. And with me to do so this morning is analyst and commentator Annie Huvi Ayeni. Good to have you. Thank you very Good much. Good morning. All oh, bright and beautiful. Thank you. With an infectious smile. <laughs> All right, sure. let's begin uh, on this happy note. We have a couple of page, uh, papers here uh, for review. We have The Punch, The Vanguard, uh, The Nation, and This Day. But we shall begin with The Punch newspaper. I believe it will be displayed on the screen in a matter of minutes or seconds, rather. And The Punch newspaper, banks, assets, liabilities hit 40.87 trillion naira. Thank you very much. Displayed there on your screen. The story is on page 31. Now, community policing gets 31 million naira. Southwest Governor's IG meets on Thursday on page 2 of the Punch newspaper. That's a conversation that's been going on. You may want to grab a copy and find out what this is about. Don't borrow pension fund. Labor wants the federal government. That story is on page 42. Now, uh, the standard organization is SON, uh, system failure. Port loses 84 billion naira in two weeks. Find out what this is about on page uh, 30 of the Punch newspaper. And the big story, uh, before we get to the big story, just to my right, is prepare for flooding now. Hydrological agency wants state. That's a good time to warn uh, the states because we recall what happen, happened from last year. The story, though, is on page 10. Nigeria must return a batch of loot if stolen. Uh, that's U.S. saying on page nine. And he will be told me something quite interesting. Uh, we'll come to that. Anyways, Khan uh, flays Buhari's claim that 90% Boko Haram victims are Muslims. That's the big story for Punch newspaper. Uh, it's there displayed on the front page, but it's, the main story is on page two. Uh, Nigerians need to know if they have not known the reason uh, why presidency could not pay ransom to rescue Chiba girls. It is because 80% to 90% of the girls are Christians. This is by Khan. Um, I'll ask you to read up that. And Ohaneza has a point also there, as well as Buhari, who says, no, is the case that Boko Haram is primarily targeting Christian. Not all of the Chibok uh, school girls were Christians. Some were Muslims and were so at the point at which they were taken by terrorists, according to the president there. All right, so we have a picture story, an interesting one, actually, there. Uh, Sonwolu says Okada Marwa ban irreversible and he inaugurates ferry, uh, ferries actually on page six. Uh, so we'll see what happens uh, in the waterways now. And then Saudi ambassador to Nigeria dies in Abuja, it's on page 43. Fire share says Ado Akure Road now a death trap. Almost all the roads in Nigeria, actually. On page nine, customs investigates $8.04 million seized at Lagos Airport. That's on page 27. A lot of money there. Visa policy will attract innovations and specialized skills, says the president on page 43. And native doctor cemetery attendant now do human skulls. Okay. That story is on page four and five of the Punch newspaper. Oshomale must apologize if he wants reconciliation. That's according to Obaseki's deputy on page 13. Where do we begin? So many stories so, so this morning. So many stories. Which one is catching your attention? <laughs> <laughs> As there are a lot catching mine. <laughs> all right, let's begin. One, one of the, what I would like to say is that from all the stories that we can see, you can see discontent in, in people. Mm. People are not happy. They're not happy over, of one thing or the other. Mm. I mean, you don't need to come out of your house in the morning to find reasons to be sad. Mm. And one of, the, one, of the, one of the responsibilities of government is to remove fears from the hearts of the people. Correct. Now, if everything that is being talked about brings issues of fear, then where it, what, how can we rate what the government is doing? Mm. While we cannot say the government is not doing anything, we can also say that what, whatever the government is doing, the effect of what they are doing is not robust enough for people to say, okay, government might not have done this. Mm -hmm. However, they have done this. this. So from this, we can move on to that. Mm -hmm. And when you hear statements from people like Khan, there's a Christian Association of Nigeria now saying that 90% of the victims mm -hmm. are um, Christians mm -hmm. rather According than they are Muslims. Uh, Buhari. According to the president, mm. however, based on what data, that's what exactly. I will say. Um, by the grace of God, I attend church. 
I lived in the north. I speak Hausa. Mm -hmm. I went to a school that we didn't know whether someone was a Christian or a oh, Muslim. Awesome. Because if a girl tells me her name is Aisha, I don't automatically say, okay, you are a Muslim. Mm -hmm. If she tells me her name is Naomi, I don't automatically say you, you are a Christian. Christian. Because she could tell me her name is Aisha and she's a Christian. Kaduna Christian. She's a Kaduna Christian just from Christian. Southern Zaria or True. just Christian or Benue mm -hmm. state is, is a Christian. So some of these statements, uh, the way they are portrayed kind of put fears in the lives of people because then the average person is saying they are not safe. Mm. They are not safe at home. They are not safe at home. And that then goes back again to what government is doing. Mm -hmm. what, is the what is the response of government? To bring to remove these fears from the heart of the people, and bring and bring um, the the feeling that yes, we have governance on ground. We know that we are going to be fine. I lived in northern Nigeria, and I remember a time when we were afraid to come out of our rooms to go to toilet at night, mm -hmm. and that was really because people. We were afraid of spirits mm -hmm. and all this. Darkness. But, uh, darkness. We were mm -hmm. afraid that, oh, a spirit will come and carry you. And some of these things were stories that were told to us because they wanted to discipline us in some way, don't go out. Mm -hmm. So like, so, so we don't go away from what the newspapers are talking about. The, the feel we get from everything that is going on is that there is fear mm -hmm. present in the nation. Mm -hmm. And that is a part that we would like government to really do something about. Do something about this fear that is going on. And remove the ethnic and all the bias of what is the insecurity. Yeah. Let the people feel safe. With the robust conversation that has been, that has been had this morning mm -hmm. on security issues, we can see that when people feel safe, they are freer to think. They are free, freer to hope. Mm -hmm. They are freer to go about their daily task. And the fact of when we are looking for some magic solution to solve the issues of poverty, mm. when people feel safe, they know that, yes, I can think of what my daughter, my daughter will do this, my son will do that, my husband can go to work in the morning, I'm expecting him at night, um, my wife is going to work in the morning, I'm expecting her at night. Whatever it is that she's selling, mm -hmm. she's in an environment where I know that there is no fear. Everything that is, is that well. Everything is working. Mm. It's working, no matter how well it can be, but something is working that is removing fear from the hearts of the people. Mm. I can't agree less uh, with you, especially when you talked about the claim by the president, uh, for instance, to see 90% of uh, Boko Haram victims are Muslims. I mean, this is a country where we struggle a lot with data. As at, as at today, we still talk about the conventional 20,000 people killed by Boko Haram. Uh, ACLED put it, and the and, uh, National Security Tracker put it at 37,000 plus. Wow. But if we look at it, is it just 37,000? But we can't defend it because we do not have data. So if the government, for instance, has a database and says, you know what, every day this is the number of this is the number of people that have been killed since 29 or 2010 that this insurgency began, and then we have a hold, and then we say, oh yes, we agree or we don't agree. But like you said, uh, these are statements that are capable of instigating fears and heart. even uh, religious uh, tensions, yeah. which we don't want. It's not a, a path we want to talk. All right, let's talk about um, let's talk about this Okada and Marwa ban. It is day, day five mm -hmm. of it. And of course, if you go on social media, we don't even need to go on social media. We just need to step out of the office and we see for ourselves, you know, uh, what is going on. Some people say it's now Otrek, you know, it's the o Otrek situation. Instead of OP. Or instead of OP, OP. instead of Okada, OTREC. instead of Marwa, instead of, you know, those things we know. Now, we hear that um, the governor has said it's irreversible. We know that the implications and consequences are already with us, but in our great spheres, do you think this is solution? What are your thoughts, even? Well, Lagos, Lagos, according to statistics and from the words of the government, mm -hmm. and the, Lagos is a lot of percentage. I say a lot of percentage because I cannot say specifically. I don't have an accurate data I can quote. Says a lot of Lagos is water. Mm. So if a lot of Lagos is water, which means that we have certain avenues of transportation that we have not sought, mm -hmm. that we have not that have explored. not been developed, we have not explored, and water is one of them. Our waterways and our well, the airwaves and everything, that is going to be a, ve a very wonderful dynamic to it. But our waterways, transportation, has not been, has not been explored. Mm -hmm. I know that many years ago, there were ferries that used to freight people. 
from when back and forth, especially around the Apapa area. However, because of the accidents, the drowning and mm -hmm. the, the poor condition of the boats, mm -hmm. and that, that fear came upon the, so everybody started going on, on ground. Now that the government has put, they've put their might behind the ferry system, mm -hmm. what, the way it's operated, we are looking at it positively that this will help to remove some of the traffic from the, traffic from the roads mm -hmm. and actually enable people to get to their destinations faster. Like for example, if somebody is going by ferry from Apapa to Victoria Island, he will, he will be more confident to take mm. the ferry than he will be if he was going to drive. That's true. Maybe he can spend eight hours in traffic mm -hmm. going home, but he knows that he can take a ferry. If I want to go to Badagri now, I know I can take a ferry that will take me to Badagri. Mm. And me, that's the, there's a motivation then to go to Badagri. Mm. There's a motivation then to go to a papa that I have not been to in so many years. So let's be positive about what the government has done. Um, operate it in the necessary way that I have been told, mm -hmm. rather than people trying to vandalize and trying to, um, and try to destroy the system, operating it in the way that the government has said it will be. I believe this in the long run is a positive move and it's a good move of the government towards getting, towards um, bringing a solution mm -hmm. to the fact of the Okada. And once the governor says there is no going back, and the makers, the operators of the OP and the GoCada, they are now saying, okay, whatever the government says, let's be obedient to what mm. government says. Because really and truly, the truth of the matter is, government has access yeah. to more information of what is happening than we do. Mm -hmm. They are thinking of the, the, the overall good of Lagos State, not just a from handful of, of people, not just one point of view. They are looking at it from different angles. With the rate of intelligence we have in governance today, I believe they know what they are doing. Okay. Positively. I mean, uh, just not you alone shares that sentiment. Here, on, it's, it's one of our programs here that the former commissioner of uh, Lagos State on Transport mentioned that uh, the, this issue is complex. It's, it's very complex. But, but, you know, from our standpoint, we may not see, see. as much as the government, uh, what they are saying or what they know, what like they you know. have mentioned. And it is also a good thing that we are seeing them, uh, well, bringing out solutions. We could say yes. it's coming out one by one. Yesterday was 65 buses, which we whined one. about and complained. We were saying 65 buses. What is that to you know the number of kekes and uh, um, tricycles, uh, motorcycles that are out of the On roads? The road. But again, today we see this. Maybe they're just about uh, alleviating our suffering. So I share in that. All right. In the interest of time. Um, we may actually have to go to another paper so that uh, we can uh, review all. So we have up now the Vanguard newspaper. We'll take a look at the Vanguard newspaper. Customs intercept uh, 8.05 uh, million dollars cash at Lagos Airport. This is plenty of money. Who owns the money is on page 19. Grab a copy of the Vanguard newspaper already displayed there. No going back on Okada Band says Sonwulu on page 10. We already talked about that. Head speech bill, stakeholders sponsor clash at town hall meeting. Um, page eight, this goes, it's uh, the poor to save Nigeria. Wow, my political party manifesto by David Ondain. Please find out what that's about on page 29. A single buyer model of privatization behind electricity woes, according to the CCN boss on page 28. Now, again, the big story for Vanguard newspaper, as you can see already displayed on your screens there, is insurgency. 90% of Boko Haram's victims are Muslims. But we are asking, the question is, how did we arrive at this uh, number? And yeah. What is the data? Does the federal government have a certain data? Where, where, where is our database? Where did we generate uh, this information from? So says President in an article published in US Magazine, that story is on page four, uh, five. Add slain pastor Andemis uh, faith should inspire all Nigerians. Uh, we heard him made that statement. And no multi-stakeholder survey to prove president's assertions. That's according to Khan, countering uh, that comment there. Again, we do not have data. Uh, maybe if there's data evidence, we just might be in a position to say, well, maybe there's some element of truth. We can't uh, justify, we can't deny, nor uh, say we have a proof for that. Now, we will expedite action on Amotekun's legal free 
framework says uh, Southwest speakers, Catholic bishops back out fees. That's on page 11 of the Vanguard newspaper. And that's about it. We have a picture story of, uh, you can uh, find out what that's about actually. The story is on page 17 in the interest of time. Shall we talk about uh, Amoteku and uh, the Catholic bishops ba uh, back in the outfits? We're seeing support now from a religious group. What are your thoughts? From the religious aspect of it, the Catholics are saying, okay, Amoteku. Um, they, they have a, a framework of it that mm. this is a solution to a problem, to a problem that has happened. My view on Amotekun is they can bring out the framework. They can bring out all the beautiful paperwork and everything. But the people who are going to put the boots on the ground, do mm -hmm. they understand what is going to happen? Are they trained, they, enough? Are they trained enough? Do they understand the equipment they're going to use? They might be very good at catapult. They might be very good at um, bow and arrow. They might be very good at dane guns. Uh, what are they going to use as equipment to work with? Mm. Are they disciplined enough to control their anger? Because they can say, okay, Operation Amoteku now, this is what we are going to do. We are going to safeguard. Mm. Um, without causing controversy, now, who, who do they see when they see a herdsman mm -hmm. with his cows? Who are they seeing? Are they seeing the enemy or they are saying somebody that you need to say, okay, you are not supposed to pass here, you're supposed to pass through here. Mm -hmm. The discipline of the trade is what I am, my own view is. What is the discipline that has been given to the guys who are putting the boots on the ground? Mm -hmm. If they can assure people that yes, there is good discipline, like the robust conversation you had on security. Mm -hmm. If not, we'll have area boys holding holding uh, powerful equipment with cars and everything that they need to cause another system of mayhem, mm -hmm. which we're praying is not the intention, which I am sure is not the intention mm -hmm. of Amoteco. Let, what we would like to see more is the discipline behind Amoteco, what guides them. When road safety started many years ago, mm -hmm. everybody was sure of the conduct of a road safety officer. Wow. You know that a road safety officer will not take bribe. A road safety officer is very well dressed. Mm -hmm. A road safety officer looks very professional. And when you're on the road and you're speaking to a road safety officer, you know you're having an intelligent conversation. Mm -hmm. If we can see that kind of level of trust that we can put on a more tech mm -hmm. and the people. That is my point of view of how I'm looking at it. I, I, I agree with you. I really agree with you on this one. We will take punch in the interest of time and uh, quickly I uh, read through. Uh, banks asset liabilities hit 40.87 trillion on page 31. Please grab a copy. Community policing gets 31 million uh, um, southwest. I, I believe that's that's actually the paper we have reviewed. Yeah. We are taking the nation instead. I uh, apologize for that. $8.6 million cash seized at Lagos Airport. EFCC takes over proof on page five. Uh, Buhari, Muslims are 90%. The same story. Oyo, assembly indicts Sachs Council Chiefs. Police seize charms on page 42. Find out what that's about. And of course, uh, we have the $318.4 million recovered. Abacha loot for Lagos, Ibadan Roads, and others. It's on the front page. Operation Amateku, NLC Bishops back security outfit and governor's ID to meet attorney general's fine-tuned bill and clearly slams the federal government. A white government is seeking $17 billion uh, loan from China by minister. I think this should be a good read. Grab a copy and find out where we want to get money from uh, China at this time. Uh, we can just quickly talk about um, the loot, the Abacha loot. We have the money uh, signed. It's coming into the country. And the federal government says already that it's going on roads. Abuja, Kanu, Lagos, Ibadan, and the Niger Bridge. What are your thoughts? Uh, unfortunate, unfortunately, um, this is, uh, I say unfortunate because there has been so much money via this Abacha loot thing for so many years. <laughs> I remember a lady said to me that she, was, that she had paid so much money to a gentleman to write a business plan for her and her mm. husband. They were going to have a fish business. They were going to run a fishery of some kind. And they were expecting that it was part of this abacha loot that was being given to people to start business. Mm. And I asked her, I said, did you get the money? She said, no. no now, if the government is saying this is what is going to happen with the loot, let us see the roads working. Mm. Let us see things. Because one of the articles in one of the newspapers is also the fact that the uh, Ondo, 
on those roads are death traps. Now, mm, the minister yeah. is saying that the, the government is now telling us that don't worry, it will no longer be a death trap because there is money coming mm. via this um, um, loot mm. that has been recovered. We are going to get it. So the next thing we are expecting is that within the next few months, we say, oh, although these roads were death traps before, they are no longer death traps mm -hmm. because money has come Thanks and we have been able to... Loot. Thanks to Abacha <laughs> Loot. <laughs> All right. Thank you so very much. Anihu <laughs> V.I.N.E. Uh, analyst and commentator. Theater. And that's why we'll call it a wrap on Off the Press this morning. Please stay with us every weekday, Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa, where we do the newspaper review called Off the Press. I am Amaka Okoye, saying have a great day ahead of you.